All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So before we get into today's video, we have a sponsor for today's video, and that sponsor is The Ridge. As you probably know from our previous spots, so they make high-quality compact wallets out of metal and elastic, and I've used and loved them for years. But I've recently been fond of the premium Damascus steel style. If you'd like to get yours, you can head to ridge.com slash brozyme and enter code brozyme for 10% off. And thanks so much to The Ridge for sponsoring us once again okay hello everybody welcome so today we surprise got three dev workshops basically to talk about uh there is a lot here and i'm actually going to separate the dojo and decoration quality of life improvement stuff into its own video that should be coming out tomorrow but we're going to talk about a lot of new items and then also just like mainstay progression improvements for new players and also some ways that I think that it needs to be just slightly better than what these improvements entail uh, and why I think that that is the case. So there's going to be another spreadsheet in this video. Uh, so basically, new player experience and forma dev workshop. Uh, this Rebecca basically just goes over like what's going to be contained in this, but we're going to go over it real quickly. First and foremost, we have the Forma Quality of Life Changes. Uh, also, everything that we're about to talk about is coming on the 11th, so it's going to be one week away, uh, so look forward to that. Uh, we're going to get the Forma Quality of Life Changes, which we've talked about before, but basically, whenever you Forma your Warframe, you're going to get abilities equal to your MR. And what that means is if you're at least MR10, you will have, when you Forma a frame, all four of your abilities at at least rank zero which is stellar because it means we no longer form a Warframe and then are suddenly in Naros until we get our abilities back. Um, this is a huge quality of life improvement for just being able to put a Forma in a Warframe and then just still be playing as that Warframe that we're choosing to invest in for the reasons of we like them, not in Naros, or unless, of course, you happen to be forming in Naros. Um, so that's going to be stellar, absolutely fantastic for any player that is MR10+. Plus. Uh, or even like even in the earlier MRs, like you're still going to get your second and third abilities too. So that's going to be really, really nice. We love to see it. Glad that that's coming very, very soon. In addition to that, uh, players who are MR30 will be not restricted in any content that requires a level 30 Warframe. So Elite Sanctuary Onslaught uh, or Sorties, you can be an MR30 player put a Forma in one of your Warframes and still do that content because you have access to the full power of all of your abilities and all of the mod points you would normally acquire anyway. Um, so another incentive to get to MR30 for those of you who are not there yet. So that's really good. In addition to that, uh, we have new Warframe augments that are coming, which we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, but basically there's early player changes, which is going to be a whole other page, very long that we're going to talk about. And there's also the dojo and decoration stuff. Uh, we're going over the early player changes in this video. Look forward to me talking a lot about the dojo and decoration changes uh, in a video coming out tomorrow. So, uh, there's also a, a host of alerts just to go over very quickly. Uh, we have more Road to New War stuff. Basically, they're going to be doing a couple streams at the times outlined here, uh, and there's going to be some rewards in there. There's also going to be some weekend alerts and things for things like Catalysts and Exilus and Forma and so on and so forth, so that'll be good to see as well. So, we have that coming out. Uh, also, uh, for this, they also updated what's going to be necessary for the new war. You need to have the entry in your codex to say to be continued on the quest for the new war codex entry. And in addition to that, you will absolutely need a necromech and a railjack. So if you don't have a necromech or a railjack, there's a lot of stuff we're about to talk about that is going to really help you get there, like in a major way that I'm really happy to see. Uh, but... You do need that stuff if you're trying to be prepared for the new war. So after the 11th passes, it's going to be a really good time to get in there and get those items. Uh, let's talk about the augments real quick. So four augments in the works. We did know about these before, but I want to talk about in depth one of them. So we have Laos Ophidian Bite, uh, change to reduce cooldown uh, of all abilities by X seconds for hitting a cluster of enemies, which is also for, for, for Y number of enemies, uh, while also adding an ability range buff for Ophidian Bite. So we'll come back to this one in a second. Uh, Zaku, Grasp of Lock. The stolen weapons from Grasp of Lock will deal damage to a target affected by an ability of the Lost, and then Zaku will heal for HP. Okay. Problem. Uh, this does not matter for Zaku. Zaku has two states of being. They have Alive with HP and Dead with no HP. There's no room for healing on this Warframe because Zaku is a dodge tank. So you're either not hit or you get hit twice, your shield gate breaks, and then you die on the second hit. That's how Zaku works right now. So healing for HP kind of does not matter at all. 
If this restored shields, stellar augment, I would be very, very excited. But because it does not, kind of could not possibly care less. In addition, Zaku the Lost. Casting a Lost ability increases the power strength of the Lost by a certain percent and will stack. Casting the same ability, uh, same the Lost ability twice in a row resets the bonus. There is some consideration for this. If they were to make this percent very high and not modified by strength, like if, if we were in a if we lived in a world where it increased the power strength by 100% and it was not modifiable by your power strength or anything else, um, you could be in a place where Zaku suddenly does not need to build a lot of power strength in order to get that full armor strip, which would be very useful. I really doubt that we live in that world, though. So I don't think that this is going to be particularly useful either, because there is only one good lost ability. Uh, so that, that makes it a pretty restrictive, and of course you'd have to cast a different lost ability that sucks in order to cast the one that's then good. And it's also just pretty annoying for rotating around those abilities and making sure you're using the next one over and over. Trinity's Blessing. Gain ranged primary slash secondary weapon. Crit chance for each percent or er, er, each percent you heal on your allies. On refresh, it adds up the new value and refreshes the timer. Okay, here's the problem with this. Trinity is way worse than Wisp, and this is a damage bonus that Trinity can offer to your team. However, if your team is good, this sucks. This might count shield percent, but I would not count restoring shields as healing if I were DE. If I were in their position, this would be health percent. And taking damage on your health, like, you could get lucky and have, like, an Inaros or a Nidus in your party. I guess but that's gonna not add up very quickly and almost certainly be a worse buff than just pressing one on wisp so i really don't see this being like a thing that's gonna bring trinity back anytime soon and i think people are probably just gonna continue to play wisp who is a much much better support uh so yeah this one is just kind of hurt by the restrictions necessary for her to give this critical chance percent bonus um so it's a bit unfortunate now let's talk about Ophidian bite so Lavos right now is a Warframe that is an, a stellar, an absolutely stellar Railjack pilot because he makes it so that the Railjack abilities work on cooldowns. And the cooldowns are pretty short for those abilities, and that's really solid to not have to manage your energy in Railjack. Actually very powerful, makes him a good pilot. Everything about this ability hinges on what X is and what Y is. X and Y change this ability from either being complete and total dog shit or a defining mod for lavos that he needs in order to be good because right now i think lavos is a low performance warframe in anything but a railjack if you're not in a railjack with lavos i don't know why you're playing lavos however if x seconds are the cooldown of a fidian bite which is eight i believe it's seven or eight somewhere in there if this is eight seconds and the number of enemies you need to hit is three or even four, we very suddenly have an incredible build for Lavos, because then his one, when used appropriately, does not need, or does not have a cooldown. It's an ability he would be able to spam, and it would affect the cooldowns of all abilities, so it would also make it so that if you were spamming it, you would cool down your four, which means you could use your four really often. Lavos's four is a pretty good ability, it's just that you can't use it often enough with the current tools that he has. If we end up in a situation where what's going on with Lavos is you are infusing an ability over his two that is a grouping ability, and you're using Ophidian Bite to not only give cooldown to that ability, but also to Ophidian Bite so you can spam it, and then you're using your four as often as it is off cooldown, which you are forcing between his three and his four, then we're looking at a situation where Lavos can just go absolutely hog wild on large groups of enemies and just dump his abilities and be actually pretty powerful because his abilities have scaling on enemies. So as long as you are like decent with armor stripping or you could even infuse an armor stripping ability if you're in something like the Steel Path where the enemy density is already pretty high, um, you could end up in a place where Lavos is very, very strong. Uh, so I really, really hope, like the, the absolute dream for Ophidian, fight, Ophidian Bite is that this number is eight which I believe is the exact cooldown of Ophidian Bite. It might actually be 7, um, but I'm pretty sure that it's 8. Uh, so make this number 8 and make this number 3, and I think that would 
unironically bump Lavos from the like kind of B rank Warframe I would say he is outside of a real Jack straight into A tier. Like the the augment would create Lavos as a new thing that would be very powerful, I think. So that's something to really consider here. I'm really hoping that this is very good. There are a couple other situations where I think this will be really good. If X is modifiable by duration or efficiency even, um, and this number is like five, and this number right here is um, three or four, then we're still in a situation where it'll have a little bit of a modding cost, and I think that's fine, but will still be really, really good. Because even if you're like a second off from the actual cooldown, like let's say your cooldown is eight, and you can mod this from five up to seven pretty easily by modifying some duration then you're still you're still looking at uh like basically spam casting your one still like you're still going to cast it often enough that it's going to be really really good uh because of course it starts cooldown whenever you use it and waiting one second between them is not a big deal so if you can modify for it a little bit like if you can make it work where you can spam cast your one and make all your abilities cool down really fast there's a lot that could be done from that and i really hope that lavos ends up being super solid uh but yeah that's what's going on with the augments and stuff. Uh, hopefully, Lavos is very good. The other ones I have little to no hope for, unless the Lost has numbers that I think are probably unreasonable for DE to realistically put on it. But we can always hope. Moving on. Let's get into the new player experience workshop. There's a lot here. There's a lot here. I'm going to go through some of it pretty fast because some of it's not super important, but it's worth noting. Tenno Guide. This is massively important. So the Tenno Guide is basically this little banner that is clickable that is going to tell you, as a new or returning player, where to go. That is absolutely vital to the experience, because I think a lot of people come back to Warframe and go, what am I doing? Why? What? Who? Where am I supposed to be? I have no idea. And this will help with that. But also for new players, that is the same experience that the new players have. They don't know where to go, and this will ideally help, for, help them with that. I personally just want to know what this says as a new player through the entirety of like the progression of the game. I want to know what this says always. So I may actually start another, another new free to play through account just to find out what this is telling me to do so I can talk about it and like have like, you know, criticism of it. Uh, if it's telling you to do anything that's unreasonable in any given spot. So yeah, super interesting. Definitely going to be really helpful no matter what. And I'm also really curious to see what it's going to say on my main account, which is done with everything in the game, and what it's going to say on my free-to-playthrough account, which as of now is caught up to be ready for the new war outside of having a necromech. So if it, it's going to tell me to go get a necromech, that would be the proper thing, actually. Uh, so yeah, this will be really, 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 really interesting. And if you don't like it, you can disable it in the options, so that's always nice to have as well. Other stuff. Uh, the heat sword crafting requirements are being changed. Uh, it is no longer going to require a neural sensor. It will now require a neurode instead so you can build it earlier. It's an improvement for sure, but the funniest thing that is said here is originally this was meant to incentivize players to explore new nodes, but it's outdated in the current state of the game. This change is smaller than most, but meaningful to players looking to upgrade their melee early on. So the really funny part about this is that the Mark I bow is better than the Heat Sword. Like, the Mark I bow is better than the Heat Sword by, like, a lot. Like, the Mark I bow is better than most melee weapons you can get before MR4. Because you'll have the stance for it guaranteed, and that stance is very good. And the sword stances, as compared, are terrible. So, like, switching to the Heat Sword is, like, hilarious. Like, don't do that. Like, you should use the Mark I bow pretty much up until you at least get a Vectus so that your primary slot is useful. So this is, this is very funny to me, but, like, making the Heat Sword more accessible is good. Maybe also making the Heat Sword, like, have stats that aren't bad would also be pretty helpful. Moving on. Uh, reduce crafting times for the Rising Tide quest. Uh, we made Realjack, time, Realjack more accessible, reducing the crafting resources and the time it took to build your Realjack. Soon we will be reducing the crafting times again from one hour to one minute per part. That is a major change. Having just gone through this grind on the free to play through, uh, I can say that the resource requirements felt very reasonable and I had a good time doing that part of the quest. 
Like I had most everything right away and there was a couple things here and there that I needed to grab. Uh, and that was super fine. The most annoying part of this quest was waiting an hour because there's a bunch of parts to it. So basically over the course of like an eight hour stream, I'd be like, has an hour passed yet? Okay, I gotta walk in there and clickety clack of the buttons and do one more part of this mission or whatever. And that's like not a great experience. Changing, changing it to one minute means that you can just like do the quest, get through it, get in there, get your railjack and get going. And that's gonna be stellar. The rest of like the early experience with Railjack that I had as like a new player on the free-to-play account was just good across the board. Like really early, like low level void storms were really great for the free-to-play through account. Like very seriously, they were really great for the free-to-play through account. And the experience of using a brand new Railjack was actually like good. And getting a Railjack that's more powerful was also good. Like I have tier three parts on my free-to-play through Railjack and it wasn't a big deal to farm that stuff out. It was all very accessible and it was a really enjoyable experience that was good on rewards too. So hopefully, uh, I mean, this can, this can only make that better and like make getting into that experience faster for a new player. Love to see it. Amp recipe reductions. So this is the part where I do have some additional criticism, but all the changes that are here are good. So, changes twofold. Reduce crafting cost for amp parts and reduce standing cost for purchasing parts. Our goal here is to make constructing an amp more appealing to newer players by optimizing progression, which is a very good goal that we're going to talk about more in a moment. Uh, this is rooted firmly in the role upgrading your amp plays and performing well in main quests like The Sacrifice, as well as engaging in focus tree related content. Here are the changes below, and we have a bunch of reductions here. I'm going to go over the ones on this that I think are the most important. Uh, number one is taking the, the... So, the way amps are laid out, and they actually have this laid out in a way that's nice. Prisms. Prism starts with P. Primary fire. Scaffolds starts with S. Secondary fire. Braces starts with B. This is your bonus for your weapon. That's how these things are laid out. And they are numbered by order of availability. There's a whole chart on this in my Discord. You can join in there and like see how amps are numbered and organized in a way that makes more sense than saying Schwak, Grand Mu, Ron, and shit like that. Um, but to talk about these, basically the Raplak is a 1, the Schwak is a 2, the Pencha is a 1, the Shraxen is a 2, and so on and so forth. So you have the 1, 2, 3, 4 parts of the primary, the 1, 2, 3, 4 parts of the secondary, and the 1, 2, 3, 4 parts of the bonus. So the main ones that are important here are obviously the earliest ones because they want to get new players in. So that would be the one and the two that are going to be the absolute most important things to have be very accessible. So they're reducing the costs on these. Mercury Liver goes down, which is fine. Azerite and Nesher Devar goes down. That's nice. Erudite goes down. Sure. These are generally resources that are pretty easy to get anyway, but it's nice to see them reduced for the very first amp you have access to uh, after the moat, of course. The Schwak has Norgbrain reduced, which is good. And generally Norgbrain uh, would be really hard to get, but with Thumpers now, it's actually pretty reasonable to get some Norgbrain very easily, so that's good. Um, the Verados goes down to 10. Escher Devar goes down to 15, that's good. Erudite costs down to 40, that's good. All good stuff here on the primaries. The two primaries we care most about, good stuff. The rest of the changes on here are also good and make the amps easier to access for the three and the four, but it's not what I care most about personally. Just note that these are good changes. The scaffolds is where we get way, way more and more major changes. Because the big stuff here is on the Pencha. Uh, the Grok Drool goes down, the Mercury goes down. That doesn't really matter. Cetus Wisps goes from 10 to 3. That is a phenomenal change and is super massive. Like, Cetus Wisps are one of the most pain in the ass things to farm and one of the most confusing things to farm for new players. So making them get way fewer of them, uh, like an amount that they could just happen to have instead of needing to definitely go and farm it is fantastic and then pyrotic alloy is actually one of the more expensive things that you can make and is made in batches of 20 so this is actually lowering this more than you might think because it's inst it's actually going from 100 to 60 because you would need to craft it five times for a total of 100 pyrotic alloy because there was no way to actually get 85 uh, just from like your regular crafting and such. So this is a more significant change than it actually looks like it is. Uh, and 60 Pyrotic Alloy is not bad. On the Shraxen, we Grok goes down, Nor goes down. Cetus Wisps from 15 to 4. Again, way more accessible. This is only one more Cetus Wisp than the Pencha. 
really, really good. Uh, Copyright Alloy is actually not very hard to make, and this is also a really significant reduction. It is the reduction of two crafts of the Copyright, because you also make it into batches of 20, um, which is good. Copyright not nearly as hard to make as Pyrotic, in my opinion, but good stuff. Braces. Very similarly, Cetus Wisp, reduced from 10 to 3. So the total you need for a 111 is 6 Cetus Wisps, down from 20. That is a massive reduction and going to be way more accessible for people, so that's great. Uh, you also need fish oil, so you're, you are going to have to do a little bit of fishing still, which I think personally is fine because it's any fish. Uh, and then Mercury liver you can probably get from thumpers or Mercury are not hard to get. And then down here, 15 to 4, once again, on the Jutney extremely, extremely good change. And those those changes to Cetus Wisps continue for the three and the four as well, from like 20 to five. Um, and like, there's not, you don't need Cetus Wisps for the Anspatha, but like 20 to five on the lower end, that's really nice. Uh, so that stuff is really, really good. And these costing, these cost requirements are great. In addition to that, the standing has been changed. So on your one parts, you're going from 2000 to 1000. And on your two parts, you're going from 5000 to 1500, which is a massive shift. Because instead of 15000 for a full set of two parts, it's only 4500 which is less than a third of what it costs right now. And obviously the cost for a one-on-one -on -one were cut from 6000 to 3000 which is nice. And we're going to talk about that more in a moment. Uh, and then you also are getting reductions on the cost requirements of Solaris prisms. And these are a bit of a different case, and I want to talk about them actually separately from the Plains of Eidolon parts. Because the Plains of Eidolon parts are going to be like the earliest to access for you. You're going to get access to this farm pretty much immediately. You don't even need to be max rank on the Plains of Eidolon in order to start doing the quills. And that's part of what makes this more important for people that are earlier on and starting out. For this, I have made a spreadsheet to discuss a further change to this and why I think that it would be good. So, the thing that's not being considered by these changes, and it's, like, reasonable for DE to miss this, is that you still need to rank up the quills in order to get access to these items. So, if we look in-game, I am on the free-to-play account, and if we look at the quill standing, I'm at rank 1, and I'm beyond neutral rank. From neutral to rank 1, you need 5,000 uh, plus some cores. And to get from 1 to 2, you need 22,000 rep, plus an additional 20 intact sentient cores, which is another good chunk of rep. So, the true costs of these things are a little bit different from just what the costs are on paper in this workshop. If we look at this, right now, obviously, these are the, the old costs here, but I do have access to getting a 111. I could get... The, what, what will be 3,000 rep, I could spend this after I get here, and also I got one of the parts for free from the rank up. So realistically, the full cost of getting a 111 is going to be 7,000 rep plus the other materials whenever this change goes into effect. Right now, even with the free one, it's 9,000, so it's not that much of a difference, right? But the current cost of a 222 is 15,000 plus... All right, well, you get one of these parts for free, so let's consider that. Um, it's 10,000 if you get one of the parts for free for ranking up to two. And then you also need 27,000 for your rank ups in order to be able to purchase these blueprints and start using them. That means that the bulk of what you're actually looking at to get these items is much different than just reducing these costs. I made a little spreadsheet for this. Sorry to blind anybody with this. Um, but the way that we're looking at it now is that the current amp costs are 11,000 and 42,000 for the 111 and the 222 respectively. And this cost is out of this world crazy high for a new player to try and get into. This cost is also like way more than anybody wants to do because this is like four Terralis. And of course you can reduce the part costs by like a third considering the rank ups. But the rank ups are uh, defined here as like the amount of cost that it is, uh, and then this is all the parts together. So 11,000 total for getting a 111 now, and 42,000 for getting a 222 now, considering the rank ups. The new change, like with the new changes that are proposed here, the changes that we're actually going to see is that the 111 is going to cost 8,000, uh, and the uh, 222 is going to cost 31,000. Obviously, you can minus 1,000 here and minus 1,500 here for 7,030k if you consider the free part you get from ranking up. But I still think that the 222 is too far away for new players. I think that it would be much better if you could introduce the 111 immediately and the 222 uh, at rank 1. So if you shift everything available 
in this store down one where the 111 is available at neutral and then the 222 is available at moat, you end up in a situation where those costs shift dramatically towards being very beneficial and very easy for a player to get into these experiences. Because if we take away the initial amp cost or the initial rank up cost to get towards the 111, the 111 only costs 3,000 rep. That's only 30 of the little Vombalist dudes or some of the random sentience that you find out in the wild anyway. As a player, even if you're not planning on a hunting an Eidolon to get this, you might just have that. And then you're able to get a 111, which is going to greatly improve your experience in just general content in the sacrifice or any other place. In addition to that, if you are looking to get into hunting Eidolons and doing that content and getting more focus points, getting a 222 drops down to a third or less than a third of its cost right now from th or what it's going to be from the 31,000 to just 9,500. You could, in one day, very reasonably have someone help you and take you on, say, three regular terrorist fights and get enough rep to get either the 111 or the 222 or a mix of the parts if that's what you want to do. And the purpose of the amp system and the reason why there are all these different parts is to mix and match the parts, right? So you want to have multiple, you, you want to have access to multiple parts so that you can combine them to your liking. Because for me personally, if it was changed to this system and I was on the free to play through, well, I prefer the one primary over the two primary for doing things like rope -a list and just like profit taker and other content like that because it has much longer range. So I, as a new player with this would be like, oh, I'm going to make a one, two, two because the two secondary, the Shraxon is good for fighting Eidolons and it's good in general. And I like the two bonus better because it makes it so my recharge time before my ammo comes back is shorter as opposed to just having more ammo. And that's, I'm able to like choose uh, based on preference between some different parts that are still like relatively easy to get what I'm going for. Whereas with what it's going to be, your, op your options are to spend like 7,000 rep or spend 30,000 rep. If you're MR10, for example, which is, you know, let's say MR8 to 10, this is going to take you multiple days and also a lot of terrorless runs that you're going to have to get carried on if you're looking to get a 222 as opposed to just having someone help you out with like two or three runs multiple days of rep as compared to like half a day's rep is a really considerable difference and that's why i would want to change it to be more like this and it's a relatively small change in the grand scheme it just really adjusts the amount of points that you're going to need for the rank ups i wouldn't even maybe suggest moving like the 333 or the 444 to any lower ranks because at rank three or rank, uh, you, 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 you unlock other things at those different ranks anyway. So just moving the 111 and the 222 down to be a like faster experience where you get access to it more quickly, I think would also do a ton for making this more accessible. And I think it'd be very helpful. So I think that's this is also a consideration. Obviously, this update is out in a week, so I, I don't know if that's something that could be added to it, but I would love to see that as an additional change here because I think just if you look at it on paper, the, the benefits to it are massive. Okay, now those are the Osteron parts. Let's talk about the Solaris Prisms. So, literally yesterday on stream, I did the farm for ranking up all of Vox Solaris. We finally made it to Fortuna rank five, and I immediately, in like three hours or so, farmed every single toroid I was going to need to get from zero to rank five in Vox Solaris and get my amp parts that I want, and get my arcanes that I want. Three hours. Three hours is all it took. For most people, I'm gonna say that would probably take like, you know, five or six hours, because we were using the doubler that we got from the Quest to Conquer Cancer rewards, um, because there was the resource doubler in there. But five or six hours to do all of that is not bad at all. That is very, very reasonable, and it felt really good to do much better than the Fortuna rep grind. Uh, so for that, my only suggestion for making these Solaris things more accessible is instead of having Profit Taker be locked behind rank five of Fortuna, which is obscenely far in and a colossal pain in the ass to get to, make it so you can start doing Profit Taker at rank three of Fortuna instead. Because if you change that and get access 
to it then. Rank three, not bad to get to. You still gotta go through a little bit of a medical debt bond farm. Like it's, you're still doing some stuff, but getting to rank three is not bad. You are, it's pretty reasonable to get there and pretty early too. So if you could get there and then get ready for Profit Taker and start doing Profit Taker, not only would that allow you to start getting into the amps that are available from the Solaris, but you would also be able to get medical debt bonds and familial debt bonds and all these higher ranked debt bonds that are a colossal pain right now to get to ranks four and five of regular Fortuna. You could get those from Profit Taker and alleviate that farm from being a giant pain too. And also that would help you farm rep in a place that's on Profit Taker as opposed to getting all of it from bounties or from hunting or from wherever else because you'd be able to use some of those additional debt bonds just to get the points. So yeah, there, there's the only change that I would make to this, because I think the, the reduction in materials that you need for these things are all very sensible and great. I just want you to be able to get in and start accessing these parts and like getting rep from Profit Taker at a sooner point. And there, there's more to be changed, I think, in Fortuna in general to make this stuff more accessible, namely uh, Thermia as, an ex as, like, as getting access to Exploiter. Exploiter as a fight is excellent wonderful fight that I'm a huge fan of, but getting the Thermia to be able to do that fight is a soul-crushing, terrible experience. So I haven't even done it on the free-to-play through because it's too awful that I could even consider any player to ever do it. Like, I would never suggest anyone do it under any circumstances because it is that bad. Um, but yeah, changing it so that you can do Profit Taker at rank 3 instead of 5 would be stellar and a massive improvement across many different aspects. It's one change that really affects kind of everything on Fortuna in a positive way, especially all the parts that uh, I think are particular pain points there. Obviously, you then have to get ready for Profit Taker, but look out for a video on Saturday that is going to be a new player guide to Profit Taker, which is actually pretty low requirement. Uh, okay. Moving on, we have some other things that are changing in here. Uh, they are reducing the cost for the refined ore and gem blueprints in the planes. Basically, all of these different blueprints are going to be easier to access. This is good. Uh, I think getting uh, all of your rep on the planes of Eidolon and uh, also getting like the rank up materials that you need has been super easy. Uh, we hit rank five on the planes of Eidolon yesterday. It was a good time. I had a good time ranking it up. It was fast. It was quick. It was an in and out process. I got like a lot of good rewards for doing it. I'm working on getting the special armor that's available in the Plains of Eidolon, which I think is one of the best rewards there. Um, and it's been a good time. I have no real complaints about the progression on the Plains. Like unless you really hate hunting, it's going to be really good. Uh, so that stuff has been great. Now let's talk about Necromech acquisition changes. So Necrome Necromechs have started to play a vital role within the system from being part of the Railjack experience to a great tool in the open worlds. While their firepower provides an advantage, the time and resource investment required to obtain one has shown to be a deterrent to new players. As the new war approaches, we aim to alleviate that initial friction and provide an easier path of obtainment. Enemy Necromechs now have a 50% chance to drop a Necromech part across the board evenly distributed. I think this drop chance right now is like 10% or something along those lines. And this is a massive, massive increase to how easy it's going to be to get a necromech like this is absolutely stellar i cannot express enough how good this is this in general i think is going to make it so that you are likely to have all of the parts you need in order to build the void rig from the drops anyway in about three maybe four tier three vaults and three maybe four tier three vaults is less than an hour that is extremely extremely good Obviously, there's the chance that you're, you know, very, very unlucky and you miss a lot of coin flips. Um, but I think that's going to be a, a fairly rare experience. And also, these parts are tradable. So they're going to be just, just much more accessible in general. You're going to be able to get your hands on these parts. Uh, you're probably going to be able to be like, hey, uh, I've got the pod. Do you have this part that I don't have? Let's just trade one for one and do stuff like that. Uh, and it's going to be way easier to get into. Really excellent, fantastic stuff. Uh, the battle required for a new player to defeat an enemy necromech is neither easy nor quick. This increased chance of getting a necromech part helps to reduce the time investment needed in order to gather the mandatory parts to build your first necromech. Now, this is the part that we are going to talk about more because I think this part is also ignoring a very important piece of information. Uh, but the uh, reductions to the cost here, the, the TLDR here on this is that this is much better. Like, that's 
that's really the, like this is much better the costs go down significantly uh the most significant stuff here uh is the the stellated necrothene lowering the necrothene from 16 to 8 necrothene's pretty hard to get uh so that one's really really nice and then the other one that's really important is cutting the thaumica distillate needed in half thaumica distillate also kind of hard to produce especially for a brand new player uh pretty high on the resource levels there so cutting that in half is also probably the uh the more important bit here so that stuff really really good we love to see it now there's a part i want to talk about with this that is not being addressed here that i think needs to be okay so here we are at lloyd lloyd is the one who keeps the void rig things in his standing and such so if we look at the standing i'm at neutral and then in order to rank up i need 10 aroken orientation matrixes you get one of these guaranteed whenever you go into a tier one necromech vault so you need to do usually let's say usually eight or nine because you can get them from rewards on a vault you need usually do like eight to ten of these though in order to get the ten uh, aroken orientation matrixes you need to rank up the Zymos Barrel, not a big deal. You can get this from Father very easily. And the Father Tokens are actually pretty accessible too. And the Traces, not a big deal. You should be popping Relics anyway. So these three things, not hard to get. This one, Gigantic Pain. Uh, these Vaults have a minimum time to do them. It's not like you can just bang this out super fast. There are timers that you have to wait for in order to get this. Uh, so doing this 10 times, like this is going to be hours. Like we're talking about hours normally to get these because in addition to needing these 10 you also need the 5,000 rep to go from neutral to one and these are also only worth a thousand so is the proposed thing here that we should do 10 tier ones and then do a tier two in order to get the rep because that sucks uh, and then even further than that if we look at the offerings at Agnesis, which is this first rank, you can get the casing, the engine, the capsule, and the weapon pod. But you need to get to Modus in order to get the actual blueprint for the Void Rig and put them all together. So the actual costs here are also going from rank 2 to rank 3, which is 22,000 rep. So getting to Modus is also a lot like not to mention the other things that you need for the actual rank up of going from Agnesis to modus if they want the void rig to actually be accessible i think the materials that it costs are very reasonable but i really Perhaps think that the rank up to like get that? to one should be reduced from 10 of these to maybe like three and that we should have this void rig blueprint be reduced down to the Agnesis level as well and like having bone widow at higher ranks i think it's still totally fine and like they state that they want to keep it that way but if this isn't lowered and like the need for 10 of these isn't lowered it's really not much easier to get a necromech it's kind of going to be exactly the same because you need to do a ton of vaults anyway to get up to rank two to finally get that blueprint if they want it to be accessible it just really needs to change in those ways as well these changes are good, but I don't think they go go quite far enough with what DE is probably going to need to give players in order to get them into this content that is like a mainstay of our arsenals. Um, so yeah, these changes to amps and to Necromex, they go a long way and I'm happy to see them, but I don't think they go quite far enough into what we might need in order for those things to be truly accessible and truly feel good for a new player to start experiencing. In addition, Howl of the Kubro quest changes. Uh, we are changing Kubro egg drop from to be 100% from the first Kubro den during the quest, so that's good. You're definitely going to get the egg that you need uh, for the Kubro quest. Great. And they're shortening the survival during that quest from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. Stellar. Going to be way easier to get a dog. Dogs are completely useless right now, and they suck as companions outside of like very niche use cases um, for the dig dog, but... At least it's easier to get them for mastery. Uh, in addition to that, we have some additional new player experience changes. And that is that we they have removed Ceres to Jupiter task of defeating a prosecutor to reduce initial friction and get you along your way faster. Prosecutors can take a long time to spawn if you were unlucky. So 
Notably, me and Moxie, who I uh, helped introduce to the game, uh, spent like an hour plus trying to get a prosecutor to spawn for this exact task um, whenever he was going through Sarah's. So it's very good that that's no longer there as like a significant progression blocker in some cases if you just happen to be unlucky. Uh, so that's really good. I'm glad to see that go. Uh, that's, that's high quality. Uh, and then they increase the window of time when you can deal damage to Vehex Propaganda Drone during his boss fight from 8 to 10 seconds. Newer players who attempted the Vehex boss fight uh, when it was available found this phase more difficult than it really needed to be. This is just good, making Vehex a little bit less of a pain for newer players. That's good. Uh, and they updated the new strange uh, objective for synthesis targets to make it less confusing. It now reads sanctuary targets as opposed to a specific enemy type, which could come across as confusing. This is good. Good stuff. Just like makes things a little bit more clear in the wording, which we love to see. Uh, but yeah, this all is coming out on November 11th on all platforms. Very happy with it overall. This isn't even everything. There's also the dojo stuff that we're going to talk about tomorrow. Um, but this is a lot. Like, there is a lot here. Uh, if you want to see me gush about how good the upcoming dojo and quality of life improvement stuff is there, uh, the stream archive is up. It's over on Twitch. Go check that out because I did go over all of this stuff on stream. Uh, but yeah, overall very happy with the upcoming changes can't wait to see how they affect the free to play through i have not farmed a necromech yet on the free to play through but the moment these changes drop i am absolutely doing that um to see how it is hopefully i mean i i would love for like you know additional changes to get in here because maybe it's like just an, an oversight that they didn't consider uh the rank ups from like zero to one and one to two for the purposes of like blocking off uh the two 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 and the one 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 and the necromech itself if there's additional changes in this update that are more along those lines to make that stuff more accessible, it's going to be, like, absolutely incredible. Absolutely phenomenal and incredible, and I, I really want that. But, yeah, if it's not in, like, this first round on the 11th, this will still be, like, giant improvements, and maybe it'll get in on another round or something like that. But, yeah, it's great stuff. Really, really fantastic. Really looking forward to it. Should be stellar. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, this video should be out today. Uh, tonight, I'm streaming some Magic the Gathering with friends, so come hang out. That's on twitch.tv slash brozyme. Uh, hope to see you guys there. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Goodbye.